Welcome back to Believe in Badgers on the Believe Network, presented by BetOnline.ag and Oak Ridge Wealth Management. I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by Badger legend, the Hebrew hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? We're doing good, man. Every day on the podcast is a holiday. Just, you know, I love chopping it up with you. I love bringing guests on that I'm friends with who have seen me in the highest places and probably some of the lowest places inside the stadium, which is, which is pretty impressive, right, Nick? It's, it's pretty impressive. Inside and outside the stadium, Bernie, we, we, we've shared a couple of laughs and, you know, and we, we, we've seen each other at, at our highest and our lowest. So it's good to, it's good to maybe share a couple of those stories. <laughs> Just a couple. Just a couple. Well, we really appreciate having Nick Pascarello on today. He's the executive director of uh, the W Club and Strategic Partnerships for Wisconsin Athletics. If you are a former athlete, uh, you definitely know who Nick is. If you're a current athlete, you should know who Nick is. And if you're a Badger fan in general, you definitely should know who Nick is. We are, And he's also a former Badger soccer player. So we are excited to talk a little bit about Badger soccer as well today. I don't, Bernie, I think this is our first soccer player we have. Uh, yeah, I think this, you are the first. Oh, so, uh, yeah. thank you for, uh, thank you for being the first one, Nick. We really appreciate you. I can, I can, set, the bar, I can set the bar low. Yeah, I can <laughs> set the bar low. It can, it can only go up from here with, with UW soccer players. So I love it. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm not going to lie. Badger soccer is not exactly my forte. I know you and Rose Lavelle as basically the only two Badger <laughs> soccer players, um, around. So, you know what? I, you're in pretty good company there as far as I'm concerned. I appreciate that. <laughs> so um, before we get into it, want to remind everyone that we are presented by betonline.ag, where they continue to be your number one source for all of your online sports wagering needs. You name it, they've got it over there at Bet Online. Head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 15% welcome bonus on your first deposit with our promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V, Bet Online, where the game starts. And also special shout out to Oak Bridge Wealth Management for their continued to support. If you are a current or fu- future professional athlete, you need to get in touch with Chris Anna City over at Oak Bridge Wealth Management. Check out oakbridgewealthmanagement.com for more details. All right, Nick, we're just going to hop right back into it here. Um, let's let, let's get started then from the beginning, but because before you became a uh, head honcho over there in, in W Club land, you had to become a badger. And before that, you had to get started somewhere, Nick. So how, how did you make it to Badger Varsity Soccer Player? Where did you get your start? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when I think back to, you know, the genesis for my love of soccer and uh, sport in general, it actually takes me back to uh, my younger days. Bernie and I have talked about this. I'm originally from the East Coast, uh, was born in born in Staten Island, grew up in Brooklyn, moved to Connecticut, New Jersey, Ohio, before my family moved out to the Twin Cities, which is where I went to high school. But I grew up a diehard Yankees fan. Uh, my dad was a Yankees fan. We used to go to Yankees games all the time. So uh, I was probably like five or six years old and went to go to the local, um, it was called the PAL, the Police Athletic League, like the rec league uh, where I lived and to go and wanted to sign up for baseball. And when we got there, it was, I got totally dejected as like a six-year-old kid because they said, no, you're too, you're too young to play baseball, but you can play t-ball. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't want to play t-ball. That was for little kids. I was a big kid at the time and wanted to take my love for baseball. And they're like, okay, well, you know, if you want, you can play soccer for a year, come back next year and play baseball. And I think like my, I, you know, this is, you know, late 1970s. So I think my dad said, well, what's soccer? Like he actually asked that question, <laughs> like, what, what is that? And so after a couple of, uh, after a couple of exchanges back and forth, signed me up at, at five or six years old to play soccer. And, and, and I never looked back. I, I was hooked. I loved it. Played it all through, uh, you know, all through grade school into high school club soccer. Um, played in uh, that, that afforded me the opportunity that uh, after I was done with high school, was able to uh, play at the University of Wisconsin. I was a freshman in 1990. Uh, I was on the, I was redshirted in my first year. Uh, was on the team for the uh, for the next four years. And uh, and it was to be honest, guys, it was you know it was a bit of a challenge. Um, I didn't, uh, I didn't play a lot. I wasn't a starter, you know, being a, I was a goalkeeper. So only it's like, you know, only one plays at a time. It's not like they could move me around the field to take advantage of my unathletic, my unathleticism. Um, 
but uh, uh, but I, I wound up uh, starting. Uh, I wound up uh, you know second string behind an eventual first team All American. And then uh, my claim to fame is I graduated in '94. We had a great season in '94, NCAA tournament team, um, and uh, we were ranked as high as I think ninth or tenth in the country. Really, really good season, strong team. Uh, but then inevitably in 1995. Uh, the Badger men's soccer team wins the national championship. So the year, the year after I graduated, and I will often say that either I helped the team get to that point, or I was the one holding them back for the four or five years that I played. They just needed to get rid of me, and that opened up the door. So, uh, but that being said, my uh, my experience at Wisconsin, uh, being a member of of the soccer team at that time. And it's interesting when I think back on it, you know, Bernie and Matt, uh, my freshman year in 1990 was Coach Alvarez's first year uh, coming in as coach. I think we infamously won, you know, one game that season. And then in the four, you know, that was my freshman year. By the time I was graduating, we were winning the Rose Bowl. And so I don't think I really appreciated it at that time being, you know, a 19, 20 year old kid. But the transformation that I was a part of uh, seeing that football team uh, resurrect itself and the trickle down effect that that had to the rest of the programs at Wisconsin. Uh, I think that that has what has set the foundation um, for the success that we've had over the past couple of decades. And I got to witness that as uh, firsthand as a, as a student athlete and especially in my role today, that's become more and more, uh, more and more special to me. So, uh, so that's how I got to, uh, to Wisconsin as a player. I was fortunate. I got to play for a little bit after college and then when I retired from playing professionally, I came back and I coached with the Badgers. Uh, in 01, I coached with the women's team, women's soccer team. And then uh, 02 through 08, I was an assistant with the men's team. Uh, then I took a little bit of a veer away from coaching and uh, worked in our business school for a little bit, worked in our chancellor's office for a little bit. Uh, and then I came back to athletics in 2018. And I've been in this current role with the W Club since uh, since 20. Uh, 2018, 2019-ish, and it's been it's been an awesome run. There's a lot of Badger experience yeah, yeah. under your belt. Good for you. I'm trying to get to your status. I want to be a Badger uh, employee, which I am kind of through the foundation forever. So, uh, Nick, I love that your passion is seems to be the Badgers, and same with me, which lines up. Also, our team, I was either the anchor that held our team back or uh, that was it because we were somehow we were like right or we set the foundation because I was right in the middle of, you know, the Ron Dane years and then uh, the, everything yeah. else, everything else they did for a bunch of years. <laughs> um, wait, so Nick, so you bring up coach because whenever somebody says coach, doesn't matter how many coaches we've had, everyone knows that's that's Coach Alvarez. Yep. What was the environment like in the 90, 90 you know, 90, 91, 90, like, did, were people excited? Were people like, oh, he only won one game, like this is a failure? Like what was that like? Yeah. Um, you, you know, from a I, I didn't I didn't really notice it from kind of the uh, from the outside in, but I noticed it from the inside out. Uh, so I you know, I was there firsthand when, you know, it, it seemed at the time like subtle changes like uh, the support staffs that were brought in, the way that we uh, approached uh, compliance from a team perspective, the way that training tables changed. Uh, and so there was, you know, I think that there was an excitement around uh, just noticing some of these things from, you know, from my, you know, uh, from a freshman through my junior, senior, and then my redshirt senior year. Like you could, you could tell things were things were changing, and uh, and and for the better. You saw the success not only on the on the football field, uh, which that, as you alluded to, Bernie, that gets every that gets everybody excited. But I think from a student athlete experience. The way that we saw some of the other things that we were, uh, you know, that we were afforded, even uh, at the at the level of being uh, an Olympic sport uh, in soccer, going from, you know, our practice gear was the hand me down stuff from, uh, you know, from the football team, which we were happy with to uh, by the time I was uh, I was graduating. So this is in the, you know, in, in the days before um, these all school deals with Under Armour and Nike. But we were totally outfitted by Puma at the time, which. Uh, which was awesome, which was awesome for soccer. So all of a sudden we had like proper training gear and and boots and and uh, and everything to, you know, to, to look, you know, to look legit. And I can only assume that that was because of the culture shift and the change and the excitement that came along with that 
um, you know, as, as a student athlete was pretty special. So what's this culture of UW soccer when you, when you step mm-hmm. in? Cause you know, much has been written about the culture of UW football in 1990 when, when coach Alvarez steps in, what, how would you describe the culture of UW soccer when you came and what attracted you to come to UW as a soccer player in the first place? Yeah. Yeah. So to answer that first question, um, you know, growing up in, in Minnesota, Wisconsin was the closest division one um, men's soccer program that there was. Um, not all big 10 schools have a men's soccer program. So Minnesota, my, you know, my home state doesn't have one. I had a goal and a dream that I wanted to play division one soccer and wanted to stay somewhat close to home. So when the opportunity came, uh, coach Launder, who was my coach at the time recruited me and offered me uh, a spot to come. It was, uh, it was a no brainer. Like, uh, Dr- uh, there's, uh, Drake, uh, Drake university in, in Des Moines. That's also a D one soccer program. And, uh, I took a visit to Drake and then I took a visit to Madison and there, there really, there really wasn't any, uh, any, any comparison there, which was, uh, which was awesome. But, uh, you know, when I think about, I, I don't think that, um, the culture of the UW men's soccer team is any different than what we would say, uh, the football team or any of the other sports or just kind of, you know, Wisconsin, Midwest in general, we were, uh, we are ex- extremely blue collar. We are extremely, uh, hardworking. Um, you know, we were, you know, we got to a point. I think towards the end there, uh, like Coach Alvarez did, is that we were able to uh, attract some of the, you know, some of the top tier kids uh, from around the country, if not the Midwest, where we we were bringing in uh, kids who played, who had experience on some of our youth national teams like that, you know, that hadn't happened before. And so you mix some of those kids in with these blue collar, you know, Midwest, local um, Wisconsin, Minnesota kids. And all of a sudden you had this culture of, um of these really good players that bought into the mindset of I got to come here and work because that's the foundation. And those are the, that's the foundation that's here. And the players that have come before me, um, that's what has uh, gotten us to, to a successful point, uh, you know, all the way to where, uh, you know, they were winning the national championship in, in 95. Uh, I'll be completely honest. Uh, uh, after that 95 season, there was a little bit of, a little bit of controversy. Coach Launder, who I just mentioned, he was, uh, he was let go after that, 95 season and uh, the program then took a uh, took a dip. Uh, then when I was able to come in 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 uh, in 2002, we were able to kind of uh, resurrect the program a little bit. Uh, Coach Trask came in after we were there, and now Coach Jones is there. And I think you've seen the program continue to go on a pretty uh, pretty steady um, uh, upward rise, which has been uh, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, the thing now that's interesting. Matt, to answer that question, uh, I think the culture is shifting, and I don't think it's just here at Wisconsin. I think it's across the landscape of of, of college soccer, where you're seeing more and more uh, that international students are becoming uh, much more of a key player, a key role in rosters and and roster managements. So, uh, and especially in the in the world of uh, transfer portals, I think. Uh, I think we've always done a good job of trying to attract the top kid out of Wisconsin, the top kids out of Wisconsin, the top kids out of Minnesota, since there's no D1 program there. Uh, But you're going to see, you know, more and more programs have, you know, international kids that make up uh, make up their roster. I I bring up um, uh, I think it was uh, Marshall a couple years ago One, you know, a mid-major wins the NCAA tournament for men's soccer and like 75. They have a 40 man roster. Seventy five percent of them are you know, are, are international. So it'll be interesting to see how that continues to, um, uh, kind of disrupt what, what, what rosters look like in programs like Wisconsin and across the big 10. So, so Nick, uh, the international thing is interesting when we talk about soccer, we don't have enough time to dive into that because I've heard that from a number of people. Um, and it's really interesting, but we, we don't have a podcast on, on that right now, <laughs> although although it is it is uh, it's I actually think it's kind of cool, but I think it's kind of wonky when you're talking about. But soccer is a different sport. Yes. Like the international world has been doing it way better than us for forever. So yeah. why would you go and get a kid? I, I don't want to dive down this hole. I, I could go deep. I think everyone can. I sucked at soccer, by the way. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that's why football of took no over. one. <laughs> I got so many red cards. Uh, my dad's like, dude, we got to take you out of this sport. You're going to kill somebody or you're going to get, you're going to kill a referee. Um, 
So Nick, I want to talk about like a lot has changed during your tenure as the W Club ED. Like there's been a lot, not just athletics, but what you've done with alumni. And I think it's really cool for people who are listening to know like how important is a W Club? You know, like when I was here, there was a W Club, but it was a Mendota Gridiron Club, I think, at the time. Or it's like hyphened. I, it was something. Yeah. And you couldn't talk to those people because there were rules that you right. couldn't talk to boosters. So my limited knowledge is like nothing of the Mendota Gridiron Club, besides the fact that I joined it later. But during my time there, you couldn't right. talk to people. W Club, you couldn't get rides. You couldn't do these things. What's changed that has now maybe kind of made you collaborate more with the football and other programs? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'd say the biggest shift with the W Club, W Club specifically came probably about 10 or 12 years ago, where the W Club used to operate separately uh, as an outside entity from mm-hmm. the university. So, uh, Bernie, similar to your role over at the foundation, we were a separate 501c3 that operated on behalf of, uh, of the athletic department. And then, you know, as uh, the NCA kind of made a crackdown on booster clubs and booster organizations like the Mendota Gridiron Club, uh, the W Club, other, other letter winner organizations. The decision was made, well, let's bring the W Club under the umbrella of athletics. And so that happened, That happened, like I said, about 10, 12 years ago. And so the W Club now is is just a, it's a unit within within the athletic department. It doesn't operate uh, as a standalone entity uh, outside. And with that came a, a pretty big paradigm shift in uh, the probably the, the vision and the goals of of the W Club itself, where uh, maybe it was uh, you know more primarily focused on um, uh, the concessions uh, for uh, at football games and the game programs, and that's what really drove the uh, the engagement and the revenue. Uh, now we've taken that shift, and it's really been more about the former student athletes, making sure that they know that we care about them keeping them connected, appreciated, uh, and, uh, and, and engaged. And there's a coming up with new and creative and strategic ways to keep people, um, to keep people engaged, bring them, not only to bring them back to Madison, uh, but let them know that, Hey, no matter where you are, we have one of the most robust and passionate, uh, alumni letter winner organizations around. We have uh, you know, probably close to 10,000 living letter winners all over the world. And the W Club can act as a facilitator um, so that you can uh, so you can uh, leverage the uh, that that alumni base in any way that you need, whether you are at lo- lost a job or looking for a job, moving to a new city, just want to come back and hang out with your teammates. Uh, the W Club can act as uh, as that mediator to make sure that that happens. So that's been that you know, that, that shift where that's where I've seen the, uh, you know, the biggest change and the biggest focus on being a true letter winner organization in it for the former student athletes. And, uh, and I would rather, I would rather my letter winner organization be focused on that than, you know, how many brats we're selling at the, uh, you know, at, at, at the Badger game. So it's been, it's been an unbelievable honoring and humbling, um, uh, opportunity that I've had over the past couple of years to, to, to hold, hopefully uphold that standard. I I still have a poster that was framed. It's one of those Bucky posters, uh, like a Picasso Bucky, that I spent a really a ridiculous amount of money on when the W Club was its own 51C3, as also my yeah. um, membership fee. Yes. And I did it when I was drunk, I'll tell and say the truth. <laughs> and I wasn't married. I was single and I was living at home. So all those checked boxes of uh, having $500 to get rid of. So I'm yep. never not this way. $500. <laughs> I'm a crazy person. And Michael Kleber, if you're listening to it, you let me do it. And But I'm not mad about it because I still have it up and it's a great story. <laughs> um, but I don't miss those days, Nick, of spending a lot of money while also having to be a member of the W Club, which I think it's yep. really cool that you've incorporated every team because every team should – be part of it, right? Like you're a letter winner. doesn't matter what you've lettered in. You are part of this alumni. So I think it's really cool. And I, I was yeah. mad at the time because I paid all this money to be a member. But now <laughs> I'm like super happy about it because I think everyone yeah. should be a part of you. You know, blood, sweat, and tears, no matter if you play soccer, football, you row. Like every sport has the dynamics of like a lot of things suck and a lot of things are great. Yeah. And if you're at Wisconsin playing sports, no matter what, Matt Perkins, you're throwing the shot put. 
you're still waking up. You're still lifting. You're still going to training. Like you're not just doing nothing to be part of that. And you've worked hard in that. But Nick, my, my thing always is now the NIL, the transfer portal, all that stuff is crazy. Yep. I have to assume the W club is extremely important with keeping kids tethered to Wisconsin. Do you meet with, do you like, have, do you have meetings with incoming students or do you have meetings with um, prospective student athletes to say, Hey, we have this robust alumni association across the late, the nation. Like we are important. This is something you come in. Cause I guess I have a hundred questions here, but I didn't know about this. I just knew like there are a couple of football dudes out there who would help me when I graduated. Right. Right. So, yep. so I guess that's where I'm going. Like how important is W club to recruiting to everything football and every other sport is I, I'm always a football guy, but to every yeah. other sport that is going on at the university. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, it, it's extremely important. I think coaches are recognizing exactly what you just are talking about, Bernie, and they are understanding that um, in this era of NIL, transfer portal, and the way things are changing, how recruiting is becoming so competitive that the W Club can be and is a differentiator for us here at Wisconsin, primarily for the examples that you just talked about. That um, So I have more and more, I have been part of um, uh, recruiting visits. So Coach Fickle has done a really good job, his recruiting team, uh, especially when they are uh, meeting with kids and their parents where they know that life beyond football is paramount to them and it's it's going to be part of the decision making the decision making process uh, i'll we, they'll strategically bring me in and i'll sit down with those kids and their parents one on one and i'll talk about exactly what you just said the w club network and and so what uh, and bringing it from when you were here, hey, a couple of football guys might help me out to, hey, we have 10,000 people that are going to put your arms around you and help you if for no other reason because you're a Badger and, and I'm a Badger and, and I just want to help. And I've, you know, I've amassed an, an army of people, you know, Bernie, you know, yourself included that I know I can pick up the phone and give a call and say, hey, we got this kid who needs a job or this kid is moving to this area. Can you, you know, can you help them? Can you get them an internship? Can they job shadow you? Can you take them to coffee? Can you take them to lunch? And when I start to talk about that, especially with the, you know, with the recruits, sometimes it doesn't really resonate with the recruit as much, but then you get mom and dad in that room and you start talking about this real life stuff and life after sport and how Wisconsin has uh, made it, uh, has dedicated to providing resources and an entire alumni network around helping their son or daughter that, you know, our, our rallying cry of once a badger, always a badger like that. Like I take that super personal and that's, re uh, and I'm really passionate about that. Now all of a sudden that becomes a real conversation and a real part of this decision. And I think it has been a separator and a differentiator for us uh, within, within the recruiting process. And more and more I'm, I'm meeting with the recruits and coaches are, are utilizing me in that fashion. And these are, these are unbelievable conversations, really powerful conversations to have uh, with these parents as we talk about, hey, you know, your you bring your son or daughter comes to school here. You're with Coach Fickle. You're with Coach Healy, Coach Coach Jones, Coach Hootman, whomever. They're going to take care of your son or daughter for the next, you know, three, four or five years. And athletically and academically, they are going to shine. But for the 40 years after that, I'm going to take over and I'm going to take care of them. And I'm never going to forget about them like that becomes you know, like I, I kind of get goosebumps right now just talking about it because those are awesome conversations to have. And I get to do that. Like, how great is that? You know, that's so it's uh, I appreciate you bringing that up, Bernie. It's probably one of the best parts of the job. Uh, one of the most fun conversations I get to have. What's been, uh, no, I, I was going to say, what's been your most like rewarding experience? Like what was one time you're like, holy crap, that was so cool that I got to put these two people in connection or, yeah. hey, I put them together and they did this amazing thing. Like what's like one or two of those times that have really Outside of putting you? two athletes together on a podcast like this. Yes. <laughs> This is, this is, yeah, this is it right here. <laughs> no, you know, Matt, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a really good question. I would say that it is, uh, I, I can't say it was specifically, uh, um, one thing or, or one moment, but it is, it is, it is the times where, uh, former student athletes have reached out to me because they're in a job search and they don't know where to turn. They don't know where to go. And I've been able to connect them with somebody and they were able to get them a get them a job. Uh, and the reason why I say that, uh, just to give a little bit more background into, you know, my, uh, my story, I said that I coached here with the men uh, until 2008. And what was after that season, uh, there was a change in leadership and we brought in a new, uh, new head coach for men's soccer. 
And so he brought in, in his own assistance. That's just the, the nature of the beast. And, uh, and, and I was out of work for six months. And I was trying to figure that out and navigate that. Uh, and, you know, to be transparent is probably one of the, the lowest points in my personal and professional life, not to be, you know, not to be employed. And, um, and, and so anytime and, and knowing how difficult that was for me, I've said I've made it a, a personal passion of mine that if I can help any badger out there ever not have to experience what I experienced being without a job, I will do whatever I can to ensure that that doesn't happen. And so that is, so I always point to that, Matt, and there's, I, I've been very fortunate. There's too many um, moments like that to mention where I've connected a badger with a badger and, and that ended up in a career change, a career promotion, a career journey, you know, uh, but anytime I do that, that will, uh, that will never get old um, because you talk to these guys and girls and you get to know their story and you get to understand them and where they're coming from and what, and what's important to them. And you figure out how you can help. And it's just a little thing, making a, making a connection or two, but that, uh, that is the most powerful and most awesome, uh, thing that I get to do in, in, in my current role. You, Nick, you bring up something really interesting because, uh, it might not be a problem now, but I think it still is, is the, is the, you lose your identity when you yes. are cast out from whatever sport you are. I mean, I was, I was reflecting on this the other day because I still consider myself a football player. I went Absolutely. to a career fair and they put retired football player. Yeah. And it's so weird, like, right? Like I'm a retired football player for the past yeah. 20 years, which, yeah. but, but you lose your identity when you, when you don't have that sport, like your, your whole life has shifted. We can dive down like what that messaging is at the university. Um, but I love that you said, like, I'm here for the next 40 years. And, yes. and the fact that you're saying, I want to help a kid get a job. It's not really, to me, getting a job is important, but it's also that mental shift of like, you're not playing sports anymore. You're not part of this sport. It can still be part of you, but your life now blossoms into something different. Yes. And so you still, it, have, and it's you still have worth. Yeah. You still have worth and you're still able to bring value to uh, an organization or a community or whatever it may be, even though it might not be on the athletic field. The transferable skills that you have from being an, from being an athlete, a student athlete, are very sought after by a lot of people outside of the uh, athletic uh, athletic uh, community and athletic sphere. And once you're able to uh, convince somebody of that, those transitions, they may not, they may not, uh, the difficulty from those transitions may not always go away, but at least you can uh, you can ease that burden. And I'm right there with you, Bernie. I mean, I, you know, um, you know, I went right from playing college to playing afterwards to coaching. And then, uh, and then it was so much my DNA that I needed to gravitate towards back, back to the athletic department, because that's, that's, that's part of my identity as well. And it's really hard for me to, uh, to let go of that. So I, I really appreciate you bringing that up because that is, that is a big part of it. It's, you're right. It's not about getting the job, but it's helping with these, these life transitions. To me, that's that was the biggest shell shock in my entire life outside of having a kid and getting married is like, I'm not a football player anymore. How am I going to make money? How am I going to operate? Who's going to like me? Like there's so many things that you feel there's a lot of emotion, stress, anxiety. You just got listen, you're, you're going to have the next 40 years of your life. What you said is like, we can find something you'll be passionate about. It just is hard at the moment. And that's when I think you're, you're very important is at that moment to say, Hey dude, don't worry. I was here. 10,000 of us were here with you. Well, you're going to cry. That, that, you're not going to cry. You're going to do right. You're going to do whatever you're going to get through this. Anyway, you're going to grieve whichever way you do it. And then whenever you need help, I'll be right here. I'll be holding your hand the whole way. I love it. So Nick, that, let's that, pivot from like a little depressing. Don't get me yep. depressed, Nick, on a whatever <laughs> Thursday. We had, tomorrow's Friday. Um, let's go. Let's pivot to game day. Yep. What does Nick do on game day? <laughs> oh, Bernie, you know, you know, real, you know, real well what I do on what I do on game day. It's when I get to see. It's when I get to see you, right? That's like that's that's, that's an awesome part of it. So, uh, so I, I do have some. Uh, I do have some pregame. Uh, pre-game responsibilities. So, uh, you know, part of uh, the other part of my role is that I help with uh, with our uh, with our employer partners. And so we have some really good employer partners, companies that love to hire our kids, build pipelines, provide opportunities for entry level positions for our, our graduating student athletes. So uh, as, a, as a small token of our appreciation, 
we'll get them down onto the field for pre pregame. We'll give them uh, a little bit of an experience of what it's like. They get to see, you know, the foot, you know, the football, uh, you know, in this instance, uh, you know, the football guys on the field in their element doing doing their thing, which is uh, which is always fun. And that never gets old. Right. I've done it a hundred times. And, uh, you know, you, you bring you know, you bring these uh, these corporate partners, these employer partners down that tunnel and they step out on the field and you see their face light up and the wonderment and amazement that never you know, that never gets old for me. I don't take it for granted. And then that quickly shifts. I'm up to Heritage Hall. So, uh, you know, for those who don't know who, what, what Heritage Hall is, it's a room here uh, in Camp Randall on game days. It's transformed into uh, a letter winner lounge. And so we allow all of our former student athletes, regardless of sport, have access. As long as you have a ticket to the game, you have access to uh, to Heritage Hall. And it is a uh, it, it, it is uh, an amazingly powerful, fun and sometimes frustrating place to uh, to be. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's about badger camaraderie, networking, uh, coming together. And that's where I spend, um, you know, probably from the first quarter on uh, being able to catch up, build relationships, you know, hang out with you, Bernie, when you're able to make it back. And I get to see my teammates. I get to see people that I've coached, uh, people that I played alongside of, uh, people that I've been able to build relationships with. And it's just, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a really special place. And I talk to a lot of my counterparts across the country who have similar rooms. And sometimes it's just for football or, you know, there's restrictions and you know, we have some restrictions in terms of how many guests you're able to bring in, um, but we've tried to be more inclusive with that space uh, and open it up to all student, all former student athletes, all eras, all sports. And it becomes a becomes a really uh, becomes a really special opportunity to do some Badger bonding uh, over the course of game day. It's like a reunion. The whole entire time is. hugging people yeah. and cheersing and taking some shots maybe here or there, yeah. but, um, or here, there, here, and there. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. What I think is really cool, Nick, is, um, you know, it used to be, you had to be a member, right? So you could be a member, but you had to pay for it. Now yep. I love seeing like, you know, the girls basketball team. I have friends, yep. girls softball team. So you see more people that you're friends with who were, who were part of a Badger team. So I think it is kind of special that you open it up. Be, I kind of always pushing for a football room just in and of itself, but it would be a weird room with a bunch of big meatheads. So I don't know what that looks like. Maybe a padded room somewhere. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, so, do you, so do you still get to like enjoy game day outside of like, I, I don't even call it work when I come to work game days, right, right. but like you get to have a rod, you get to have a, you know, a, a spotted cow and just look back and be like, man, I created this beautiful thing here. You know, uh, you know, very, very rarely only in the, I, I, you know, from, from the, uh, through the lens of just being a fan and being a passionate Badger fan and an alum, uh, that's not what my game day experience is. And, you know, I, I very rarely, you know, watch the game. It's just, you know, on the TVs in Heritage Hall, uh, you know, the other parts, uh, typically when we, you know, uh, another part of the W club, my role and responsibility is to, is to host reunions. Right. So if it's a football reunion or soccer reunion or softball reunion, a lot of times we'll build that around football games in the fall. So we will do some kind of tailgate, whether it's, you know, out on the back lawn or the front lawn. And we'll be able to, you know, have a broad, have that game day experience of tailgating, you know, being able to catch up with people. And then uh, and then it's it's typically right up to, you know, some of the stuff that I'll do with the employers. And then up to uh, up to Heritage Hall. So uh, a lot of times, if it's a close game coming down to the fourth quarter, I'm glued to the TV, you know, with with a couple hundred Badgers on my left and right, uh, watching the game up in Heritage Hall. And that's what you know, that's what my game day experience is. And I, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's you know, it's awesome when I can be up there with you know with, with fellow uh, fellow Badgers, former student athletes, watching the game and uh, and having some fun after maybe doing a reunion beforehand. It's uh, it, it is an it's an incredible experience. So I don't so, have so to. Nick, make yeah. I know what Matt Burke is about to ask. I think I don't know, if you doing, do, but go ahead. Maybe I, 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 let me see, Matt. Let me see, Matt. So I, what I think Matt Perkins is going to ask is any good Bernie stories or what does Bernie look like when he shows up in Heritage Hall? <laughs> Matt Perkins, am I close? Bernie. You know? uh, I, tangentially, tangentially, yeah. We'll we'll get to my question next, but I do want to hear this first. Okay. Yes. So I will say, uh, I will say that when uh, when when Bernie when Bernie shows up, 
if there ever, not that there typically is, but the, if there ever was a lull or, you know, maybe, uh, uh, maybe things got a little bit quiet, that instantly changes, right? Bernie, right there, right? Right. That's what Bernie brings right there. The laugh, the smile, the engagement. He's like, you know, I, you know, probably, you know, I think about him and I think about Richie, Mark Richmond up in, uh, up in Heritage Hall. Like you guys are like, you know, you're the mayors, you know, everybody, you're shaking everybody's hand. You're giving everybody hugs. You're just engaging. People gravitate towards, uh, towards you. And that's the, you know, that's, that's, that's the best part about, I wouldn't, uh, you know, and, and Bernie enjoys a, a beverage every once in a while, just like, just like we do, you know, we all do up there, but that's what makes it so, you know, that's what makes it so, that's one of the cool spots about Heritage Hall is at least for the time being, it's one of the only spots in Camp Randall outside of the suites where you can, you know, you can, you can enjoy, you can enjoy a beverage, which makes it, which makes it pretty special. So uh, nothing, uh, nothing embarrassing that I would, uh, that I would say about Bernie, because uh, anytime that he, anytime that he shows up, it's going to be happy. Uh, it's going to be, um, it's going to be engaging. People are going to gravitate towards him. And it just kind of takes, uh, takes the camaraderie up one or two, uh, one or two notches. And it wouldn't, you know, it's, if he's not in there, if Mark Richmond isn't in there, some of the, you know, there's a couple other key people. Uh, Heritage Hall, it definitely has a different vibe and a different feel. Not, uh, you know, not worse. Just uh, things are things are elevated when Bernie shows up, you know, when he's there. And I wouldn't have it any other way. It's hard to miss him. It's absolutely hard to miss him. So what I That's wanted weird. to know was you mentioned all these different sports coming back for units and stuff. Which team turns up the most? Like, which team is getting the rowdiest at these uh, at these at these reunions? I think, like, you know, most people would say football, but I, I get a feeling. I get a feeling. Now, I was roommates with wrestlers when I was at UW. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys definitely get a little rowdy. But at these reunions, yeah, which team is those getting, dudes? Which, 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 team is, <laughs> which team's getting the craziest? You know, uh, one uh, one Hockey. team. Yeah, well, I tell you, one team that we've had back the la the last couple of years, which has done, uh, which they've showed up uh, en masse and uh, just you know carrying the torch, has been softball. Those those ladies have been they have I've been, been there for some of them. Yeah, I've been there for yep. some. Yeah, I would say yeah. they might, some of them don't remember where second base, first base, any of the bases are. <laughs> I mean, have, you know, I think you're right. They've been carrying that torch. They, they have been, you know, we, we've done some stuff uh, through COVID to try to engage our former student athletes with some, you know, some fundraising efforts, which, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, typically we don't do in the W Club. We're not, you know, we're not a fundraising arm. We're more of the, you know, we're more of the friend raisers. But, you know, through COVID, we all needed to chip in and find out creative ways in which we could help. And uh, we, we put out some challenges to our former student athletes and the softball uh, women, they stepped up. Uh, and they were the beneficiaries of winning a couple of these contests. And man, they showed up and they they enjoyed themselves in the most badger, you know, in the most badger way possible. And they were just they were awesome to be around because they were just so appreciative for the opportunity to come back and stay connected and see each other. So anytime uh, we, we provide opportunities for people to come back and, and be an undergrad for a weekend, they're going to show up and they're going to you know, they're certainly going to have some uh, some fun. I mean, we did. Was it last year or the year before? We had a women, uh, you know, a 50 years of women's rowing, and we had over 400 people at that, uh, you know, at, at that event. We're planning 150 years of men's rowing at Wisconsin next fall. You know, we'll get it. You know, those guys will show up and be, you know, and and be awesome. So, but uh, but one group that sticks out those the softball women they've been awesome, and I and and out of those reunions, I've been able to forge a couple of uh, good relationships with some of them, and they've been. Yeah, they've been they've been great. Them and you know the uh, volleyball is well. Actually, as I'm thinking, volleyball as well. They've they they yeah. they've come yeah. here the last couple of years. Coach, hey guys, you football know, challenge yeah. accepted. Nick, I'm coming in there hotter than hot next year. You're gonna see. I'm gonna go as hard as I. I'm getting people fired up. No one's sitting down. Everyone's getting. I'm mean, we're just a football guys. We're doing human pyramids. Brotherhood weekend, Bernie. We'll bring it. I'm, I'm only I'm only able to come to Alabama, so. Uh, maybe two coming quick. So, uh, so Alabama, but, but Nick, I promise I will never let you down. <laughs> you, oh my you dying never, day. You never, you know, you never, you never have Bernie. You never have. Nick, I just want to be buried under the stadium. Just let, just figure out how to do that, please. Oh, you me. and Jimmy Hoffa. Like what, yeah. what is this here? <laughs> 
Listen, I'm we'll, happy. We'll, we'll we'll figure it out. Maybe your ashes sprinkled somewhere. You know, however you know, however you decide to go. We'll, don't tell anyone, but I'm definitely doing that. Just don't vacuum me up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We can do, <laughs> very, we can do me up after the game. We'll do side by side graves. Right. <laughs> Underneath the stadium, me next You're talking about fundraising. It might be a good right. it might be a pretty it's a horrible thing. What? This is a horrible conversation. Listen, Badger, always a badger. We take that serious around here. You are literally always a badger buried under Camp Randall, and I would actually probably be happy to be part of that group. <laughs> Oh, boy. On that note, Nick, thank you so much for coming today. This is okay. awesome. This, 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 this I, I love you, man. I, I, I truly can't wait to see you uh, in September. Yeah I, yeah, I look forward to it. And, you know, if you need anything up until then, you know, you you know how to get a hold of me. Just let me know. This has been this has been fun. I appreciate you. Let me tell my story, share that a little bit and and uh, talk about W Club, something I'm really passionate about. And you know, the community we build with our former student athletes, it's super special to me. I think, you know, Bernie embodies a lot of why I love to do what I get to do. And, um, you know, I'm just, um, I'm super humbled, super blessed. And uh, I, I really can't thank you guys enough for letting me, uh, let me talk a little bit about it today. It's been great. Well, we really appreciate it. Everyone need, you know, you know where to find out more about the W Club at uwbadgers.com um, or just Google Wisconsin W Club. I mean, they're, they're on Instagram. They're on LinkedIn. They are everywhere. We love everything you guys are doing. Badgers helping Badgers forever. Uh, we want to thank everyone for tuning in wherever you are uh, to the Believe in Badgers podcast on the Believe Network presented by betonline.ag and Oak Bridge Wealth Management. Shout out Chris and Assetti. Uh, like we said, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, on Wisconsin. Once on a Badger, Wisconsin. always a Badger. Once a Badger, always a Badger. <laughs>